everyone, and welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Jiang Jun with Gregory and Nishala. Welcome again to Crossover, and we see Gregory was taking lots of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> and we hate to mention that fact, which we barely noticed. Actually,、uh, some say that's something that would very much frequently done by senior citizens to keep the memories. I'm sorry to mention that, Gregory, <laughs> but we barely、uh, noticed that, that fact that Gregory is actually in his 80s already. What?、Mm. 82. You're 82.、Mm -hmm. See, it's past my 81st birthday. 81st birthday. See, I, 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 I don't mean to be implied, but you know that's. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun. You look great. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Absolutely you. Thank great. You. You. Now we are going to actually share with you, Gregory, since you're here, three stories involving senior citizens、uh, in, in in China, and some about、uh, what they do in daily life. Some、mm -hmm. about、uh, in public the, transportation. Uh, the in public trans not only in public transportation. Some are、uh, concerning the changes of the values. Held by senior citizens in this modern day in this、okay. new new society. What about the first one?、Uh, I know you take subway to come over here every time to have this program. Me too. You too. Me too. But this is well, okay. The same question. I'm not a、question. senior citizen yet, but <laughs> I do take the subway. <laughs> well, actually, the story involves both of you, the two generations. If you are seated in there, if you see Gregory standing in front of you, what would you do? I would get up. Surely, yeah, yeah. That's I would get up. Yeah, that's the norm. That's、yeah. the、uh, the social value. That's the value we we have. The traditional value. I, I, what if what if someone doesn't do that? What would you do? Actually, I took、uh, subway a lot because、mm. that's my first choice wherever I go, unless I have somebody pick me up with a, with a, with, a, with a car.、Mm. And then the last station I get off, and then make it on taxi to come to where I want to go to.、Mm -hmm. uh, my experience、uh, on subway,、uh, about one third of the time. A young person would say, "I have a seat for you." The other two just thirds, just one third. Yes, they they would ignore me, my existence altogether. You just look too young. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not good enough. I see them not to. I had I had an approach. I、uh -huh. would say, "Look, there's four or five people sitting there, or young 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 fellows, or young girls, and say, which one of you is waiting to yield the seat to me? I would appreciate that." I say that in low. You said it directly to direct, them in Chinese, of course. When that happened, do they get up? Two or three would get up. Two or three out of. I, I look at them. Which one of you would like to stand up for me to sit down for a little while? I have something to do. They, they stood up, but in many cases they do not do this voluntarily. They require a hint, which I do that quite often, because、right. I don't need those seats myself. You know, I, I, very good health. I can lecture stand for three hours, but I purposely say that to send a message out to young ones to stand up. I do that every day when I. Uh, start, uh, riding taxis. I mean, subway is empty. I thought the picture is like, and whenever we see someone, a senior citizen coming into、uh, the car, I mean, when when they see、uh, a senior citizen standing next, and they would automatically, you know, stand up to save、no. the seat for them. There's a difference. For example, if you ride a bus, the bus conductor. Mm. They were worried about your safety. If you、uh, fall,、right. they would say, "Old man, come on, old person is here." But not in subways. There's no this, this record. This But broadcast is not helpful. I was going to say, if、yeah. you if you if you notice every between every single stop on the subway,、mm -hmm. the You know the, the voice、broadcast. recording, the broadcast that's、mm. put on in the subway cars is,、mm. you know. But there isn't a, a conductor. No, not a person. No. But every single between every stop, it's yeah, played. Yeah, there that, is a little please reminder. Please be polite and、mm. give up your seat for、uh, older people, pregnant women, you know, the, well, the disabled. The, the common understanding is that is our social responsibility. I mean, out of our our values to stand up for the seniors. What about this one? Because we have this、uh, video to share with you, and this is the story that happened in the city of Zhengzhou、mm -hmm. in Henan Province, and、mm -hmm. it's in a bus. It's fully packed, lots of passengers and rush、oh. hours. And、um, you know what happened in that bus was a、uh, um, there was a senior citizen、uh, standing next to a young girl,、mm -hmm. and what happened was the young girl didn't stand up. Mm. Uh, to give the seat to 
you know, the, uh, the senior citizen. And um, obviously, he's not happy. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm old. Why very don't you just stand up for me? Mm. And uh, he uh, ended up uh, beating up the... Um, Putting her hair or something like that. Uh, the girl. Her, yeah. that's, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's all much, there? Much too much. What do you think of this, Gregory? I think it's ridiculous because, uh, of course, I have a different approach. Mm. I can always get in my seat the way I want. Uh, uh, it's desirable for the young, young ones to yield the seats voluntarily. For example, when I travel to Japan, back to the United States. In Japan, it so happens that the seats marked as for seniors is usually empty. Mm. Even if there are people standing next to it, they don't sit on it. In the United States, uh, you have seats like that. If you occupy the seat and then someone come up, an older person or some pregnant woman, mm -hmm. they'll yield the seat to the person. It's, it's not difficult to answer that question. I mean, obviously, that is too much. I mean, it's only because they do not stand up, you won't beat them up. You cannot do that. That's just too much. Well, it's an, that's an extreme. Uh, extreme. Uh, yeah. And I, that doesn't, I mean, that I think is more of an isolated incident than something you see that's so. rampant all I over agree. China. I mean, it, it, no. Now, let me tell you the other side of the story, because there's some new development mm -hmm. also in Zhengzhou since that happened, and uh -huh. people didn't like that. I mean, that shouldn't happen in that way. So a group of uh, senior citizens, they went to the street, they say, hey, let's, as senior citizens, let's save the seat for young people because they are tired, you know, they have to work for their living, you know, they're still uh, in their earlier stages of their career, so why don't we save our seats for them? What do you think of that? I think that's sweet. But would you take the seat? No. <laughs> I would have a very, unless I was truly exhausted or I wasn't feeling well. But even in that case, when Gregory stands up, hey, young man, I look, you're, I can see you're tired. Why don't you just take my seat? <laughs> I'd, it'd be difficult. It happened that uh, those older ladies to get on the public transportation, they had the seats first. Then they stood up yep. to yield the seats to a younger person. Nine out of ten, they would not offer received of his essence too much. They wouldn't dare yeah, so. <laughs> out of there. I don't know. I mean, well, that's true. You know, it, it's kind of surprising that in your experience, Gregory, mm -hmm. I mean, I see it myself riding the subway. I don't take the bus so much in Beijing, but I ride the subway all the time. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting that, that you find in, in other places there is such a tradition and such a history of respecting the old. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. your elders and mm -hmm. and looking after them and caring for them. And of course, mm -hmm. we are seeing a change, a gradual change in, in society with regards to that. But still, it's quite ingrained in the culture here. Mm -hmm. That's true. Like, for example, in Japan, I was accompanying an older person in his early 90s. He's very, very healthy. He walked in the restaurant the seats was taken waiting for their turn to get into the uh, restaurant. Mm. I saw a Japanese older person like in the 60s and 70s just stood up to yield the seat to the 90 mm. older gentleman. So I think that's a, it's a, it's a tradition, I suppose. I think uh, it's a relaxation of how people are caring about others. So if you have young young person, regardless of who's standing in front of them and doing nothing at all, I think that's not right. But there is another side of the story, and uh, young people that are feeling this trade-off. I mean, on one hand, they, uh, they feel tired because, you know, they have to get up very early, they have to go to the office very early, but at the rush hours, you would see lots of, uh, you know, elder people, uh, senior citizens coming out, I mean, they have their own plans. And on the one hand, they feel tired themselves, but on the other yeah. hand, out of these, you know, values and you know, their responsibilities, they have to stand up, yield the seats to the, uh, the, the senior citizens. So what happened really these days, there is a call say for the senior citizens, why don't we just change your schedule a little bit? Can, mm -hmm. can we just uh, go out a bit later than the original schedule, you know, say you know, time? To be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. the subway is always packed in it's Beijing. True. It's never not packed. I mean, at rush hour, it's really Worse. packed. But even, you know, middle of the day, you still get into very full cars. Mm. So, uh, I mean, 
staggered working hours or staggered going out hours is this it's a good it's a good motion it's a good idea but mm -hmm. there is never a time True. <laughs> when the, empty. the subway is no. you know serene and empty oh. Let's take break break and uh, continue <laughs> this episode uh, after the short break you're watching crossover we'll be right back back to crossover and today we're going to share with you and with gregory a few stories concerning the senior citizens and this next one this is about a new establishment, actually. Uh, this is about this new organization, which has been there for quite a few years. And it's uh, more like a charity organization taking the wills from the senior citizens. If you're over 60 and if you're willing to leave a will, uh, you know, with the witnesses and uh, if you want to make it official but not known to your family members, you can do so with the help of that organization, and it's free of charge if you're over 60 years of age. Mm. Just I think that's a marvelous service because it happened all, very often in China today. The older person passed away all of a sudden. There's no will whatsoever to mm. tell what to do next. Uh, become a problem in the family. Mm, yeah, you know, of course. Fighting for the house, fighting for the uh, uh, valuable belongings, and so on. Mm. And one of the story was about a famous James Painter passed away. I happen to know the person myself. He oh, passed right. in, in the 90s, and there were children fighting for the precious yeah. possession. So mm. I think it's a good idea for a person to have that thing done when you are in total control of your men mental state, to say, this is my wishes. The other approach, of course, medical situation, because a lot of people, when they get hurt, all of a sudden they lose control of their senses or become paralyzed, they couldn't speak, and they don't want to prolong the life unnecessarily with life support systems. But without a piece of paper in position to have a person to, to, to follow the rules that he wanted to be done when he is clear in his mind, that's also troublesome. So these two types of things, I think, is needed. This organization in China, I understand, has been existing for several years now. Mm -hmm. But still, only several thousand people went to them for help. I yes. think this service has been expanded. Well, but that has a lot to do with the concept I was we have. just yeah. going to say mm. that wills in China, it, it's, it, it, so, um, sometimes maybe it's slightly, you know, because of superstition. You know, you don't mm -hmm. want to be courting mm -hmm. death. It brings mm -hmm. bad luck. Yeah, I mean, They're why would you that. do that? You know, mm -hmm. that, that's a factor. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I think just traditionally, there's, there's not that history or that tradition of well, everyone has a will. But it's been changing these days. It is, it is and this is the very obviously, mm -hmm. the, you know. But, I mean, uh, uh, one of the possible reasons uh, for that change is, is out of practical, practical reasons. And I mean, like the case with mm -hmm. the Penta, you know, obviously because he didn't have that will and his children are now fighting uh, about the estate, about, you know, what they're going to inherit from the family. And they're uh, filing that uh, lawsuit against their own mother. So that's a sad thing to see, and the mother is in her 90s already. True. That's also. a sad thing to see. I mean, these days, people are more well-off, Yeah. so they ha have there's, more properties to There's share. more to fight for. Ex exactly. Yeah. I do believe government agencies should take the lead to publicize the concept that it's essential and helpful for you to have this will in place. And also the media is like the role we're playing right now. Mm. to share the messages. I think people can change the concept if they accept the message, understand it's essential for them, for their own welfare. Mm. They can do that. If not this one, if not with this organization, oh. what is the normal way of doing, you know, leaving a will or something? In the States, you go to a, you, you, you have your will written up, you notarize it first, then you have executor, mm. or you put this in the hands of an attorney, or you know, the people know this is something I have hiding somewhere, when things comes up to the point, I need this message to come out openly, it's there. In China? Not so. I don't think this, uh, I think it's a common practice in China today, but we have to have that thing advertised, mm. publicized, to urge people to have this living will or will whatever mm -hmm. to set up to prepare for un unseenable situations. That well, happen. there is that official will system in, in China. I mean, once if you are doing that uh, with the witnesses and you know with the uh, i don't know the official system of doing that but uh there are wills which would be supported by the court, court.
court if there is any you know, arguments about it. And uh, people are just worried about this charity organization because mm -hmm. it seems this is not a legal organization, legal institute. You're only there to help the, uh, the aged people over their 60s and whether that will be accepted by the families if there is any contradictions of interest involved. But in China, I mean, so say, for example, say I was over 60 and I went to this organization and, mm. and drafted a will. Um, could I not get it notarized or uh, sort of made official in, in a legal sense? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you have, lots of families don't you like do wills, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you might be totally dissatisfied with, mm -hmm. you know, what your mother said in her will, but that was her will. You can't mm -hmm. argue with the will, really. They say you, they might have different versions of wills, you know, the ones that you, you, you set aside with the organization might not be known to your family members. They might not be aware of that one. Well, but that's okay because it's your will. It's not their mm -hmm. will. So which one comes first? The last one. Usually the last the most one. Most recent, you, you right? Can, you can really change your mind and change the terms you put in already. But I understand this organization has a more thorough approach. They have video tapes mm. to record the whole process. That's also smart. has a witness to sign the name on it. Mm. So this, this document would have uh, enough persuasion to tell the judge or the court to, to follow, to follow through, court. unless you find another will somewhere else uh, signed later than this one, mm. but that happens not That's, that often. Uh, there is another scenario though, I mean with this one, especially when lots of properties are involved and then the will that you left with uh, that organization might not be known to your family members, but under you know, kind of a pressure from the families they might like to have a little discussion about what the possible, you know, solutions, the possible way of distribution of the properties. Uh, if one day you're going to leave us and then under that kind of pressure, the parents might end up, you know, with the uh, discussion, with the meeting. And when, according to the children, the family members understanding that would be the final arrangement. But actually, there is another one which the parents obviously wouldn't like to mention to the to mm -hmm. the uh, to the, the uh, children. Mm -hmm. So that's when the uh, you know the argument, the controversy might might show up. That's what they are worried about these days, because yeah. this is not a legal organization, not legal institute. We should make it legal. Mm. Yeah, I understand. I think that this, the service to provide is extremely helpful, but they are handicapped by not enough funding to support them because when you have somebody provide the services to these people needing help, yes. there's a cost involved, That's don't you think, right. rental, whatever. So the government should actually provide a service. If not, they should support this type of organization to do the job better. Exactly. I mean, these days we're talking about only thousands of cases, thousands of... Several uh, thousands so far, after wells, so many years. But they're going to, if it is 60 and the life expectancy would be now 80 something, Something so at like least 70-something, so mm -hmm. we're talking about 20 years on average, yeah, maybe. Yeah, a reasonable amount of time. After the will is done, and they're going to keep all these wills. Mm -hmm. and that also involves some cost. I do believe it's a matter of education because whoever the person is, me or someone else in old age, would certainly like to see that later on, when he cannot control his own himself now, mm -hmm. tell what he wants to do, he'd like to see his wishes carry out. So this will itself would accomplish that goal. Mm. So I think they can easily be persuaded to take actions accordingly. Mm. Right, uh, let's take another break and we have one more story to share with you. You're watching Crossover, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Crossover and we have one more, to, uh, one more story to share with our viewers. And this is um, actually a new uh, concept or a new uh, idea initiated by some volunteers. They have a website. Mainly, this is uh, they put it in the way like to to die in dignity. Uh, what does it mean? Really, is if the one is really sick and it seems there is no hope to cure the diseases, while the patients are in the process of uh, uh, you know all these pains then if it is out of the will of the patient, you know, uh, to, to die in dignity, and if it is stated long before, 
uh, the patient was that ill, and when it was when it was stated when the patient was obviously very clear, then they're encouraging actually the hospitals or their family members to let the patient die in dignity. And this is somewhat different from the uh, the, the other concept, like uh, what is it called again? Euthanasia. Euthanasia. So it's not so much. It's not so much that, that that these people are asking to be basically killed. killed. It's just that no desperate measures will be taken no. to just pull up the prolong pipes their, over, prolong yeah. their life. Exactly. I mean, even if they are going to live, it won't be uh, a life with quality. Right. Uh, in, in, in other words. Right. And there's two different approaches. One is mm. that, for example, if you have uh, a prolonged uh, cancer, mm. for instance, you are extremely painful. And there's no way that you can recover as a matter of dying one year or miserable living for another two years. Uh, so the person, again, has to have this thing written down ahead of time. So in the States, they call it Advanced Health Care Directive. Mm. Uh, this covers two situations. One is that if you want, don't want to be uh, vitalized when you have a heart attack or something, or you don't want to be sustained your living without knowing what's happening, mm -hmm. like a vegetable you would say, stop the life-supporting systems. Therefore, that particular instruction is written in a written form in the hands of an executor or a family member to, to hand it over to a physician. So this is his wish. Mm. Yeah, the second part is want to terminate the miserable situation earlier requires a different approach. Yeah, yeah that's, that's you know, medicine. You have to not just put in the plugs, but because the person can, can live for quite some time right. miserably. So that these cases are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. they're different. You know, in the states, they have um, a organization, I guess, or a system called hospice. Mm. Yeah. And what that is, my my grandmother was on hospice. Basically, it means you you don't want any kind of desperate measures done to save your life, um, and you are dying. Um, and basically, you can enter hospice, so you can basically get on hospice. And what mm. what that is is they provide you with pain medication. True. Sure. They provide you with basic medications that mm. will help make you more comfortable. True. But they don't give you any kind of, you know, crazy stimulants or things like this to, mm. to, to, to try to prolong your life. Uh, similar organizations are also uh, existing, actually, in, in China. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's only under different names anyway. But uh, we have to state that the, uh, it's not accepted by the Ministry of Health in China, and they say it's not time yet for us to uh, implement this new idea mm. of whatever you call it, die in dignity, and basically if you have the condition, if you have the time, you have to save the patients, whatever it takes. Mm. And that's, you know, according to their explanation. And uh, people also have concerns. I mean, how can you be sure that this is out of mm. the, the patient's own Wish. will? <clears throat> and this course. is not that, uh, it's not you know, decided by someone else. It's not the family members, not the doctors. It has to be decided by themselves before you can take any action. Of course. Let me be on something else. In China today, there are many older uh, people, they have prolonged disease. For example, they already uh, become uh, handicapped to the point they're paralyzed, for instance. There's no, there's no way that family members can take care of them even if they wish to do it at home. Therefore, we need hospital facilities for mm -hmm. them to go there, you know, to have these professional uh, nurses to take care of a group of, uh, of patients. And that facility in China is lacking, mm. very yeah. much lacking. We I spoke to an owner much. of a hospital uh, providing this type of services uh, in this particular area. Mm. He mentioned that there are government sub subsidies to, to ease uh, the financial burden of the per, per people admitted to the hospital, but it's not enough. And I think that it, it become a problem in China because a lot of people are in that category, you know. I cannot take care of myself and my children would not be able to do it. Uh, everything considered, so they need this type of service mm -hmm. in hospitals. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I mean, there could be uh, some, you know, financial challenges in, if you're talking about... A part of that. Exactly, because uh, it seems the country has already I uh, had that challenge of finding enough fund to take care of the uh, retired. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're even thinking about the policy of prolonging 
uh, the retirement age. I mean, by one, two years. I don't know. Obviously, that's not welcomed by you know by anyone. People <laughs> retire exactly by the uh, the ones uh, who are about to retire or by by the new the young generation who are about to start their career. That means we have to work longer years to that. But you know, this is getting more a serious problem these days in China as China. Is becoming such a uh, what we call the uh, aged society. Mm, it really is. There's a there's a big number of of older people now mm. here, and True. and you know it is something that I'm, it's not surprising that this is you know coming up in policies and media and you know that it's become quite a social issue. You know because it, it it is. Uh, we do see there are some changes happening taking place say, in this society. I guess before. The topics won't be won't be even considered mentioned or discussed. Yes. Considered, I mean, the the issue of death uh, that's like a taboo. Right. But it seems these days the Chinese society is becoming more open uh, to any ideas, any concepts. And uh, before the break, we mentioned uh, the concept of uh, a will. I mean, even though some still think. This will bring some bad luck. They're they're now ready, whether they like it or not. They're ready to discuss it, and now this is really the issue of death. And people still, I mean, is even worse than the will. I mean, this is more about uh, uh, the death issue itself. But they're they're also ready to talk about it. And if something happens, they are willing to die in dignity. I think people can change the concept. The best example I can give here is insurance. For example, insurance uh, services in the past in China never heard of, like 30, 40 years ago, mm. right? Now we have life insurance, we have medical insurance. So when you buy life insurance, for example, you don't expect to die tomorrow. The same is true when you fly an airplane. You buy a temporary travel insurance. Mm. Right. If you know the airplane is to drop, you will have to get on it. <laughs> so this change of concept is essential. I think when a society making progress, mm. uh, you would easily to accept this. Reasonable.